so fucking precious when you smile. Yep, that's me. Well, actually, that's not me. But today we're gonna talk about this guy. I present to you the son of Asia, the protector of the light, the patron of Turkmens, the champion of Turkmenistan, Gurbanguly Berdy Muhammadov. And I spelled his name right on the first try. Impressive, huh? The Borat was released in 2006, and Sasha Baron Cohen starred as Borat Sagdiv, a Kazakh journalist who came to the United States. In 2012, he portrayed Admiral General Aladdin in The Dictator. And in between the two events, in 2007, Gurban Gulibirdi Mohamedov becomes the president of Turkmenistan. And believe me, he has incorporated the best features of these two characters. He is similar to Borat in Ancestry and to Hafaz Aladdin, well, in everything else. Oh, and I distinctly remember there was also Bruno between these movies, but for some reason our hero decided not to take anything from this film. Or did he? But let's start with the boring historical part. How did this simple dentist from a tiny village become the dictator of one small but very proud Central Asian country? As you know, Turkmenistan was formed in 1990, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The small country had lots of oil and gas, so life in it was not bad for a small segment of their population. And on the top of the food chain was him, the great Turkmen Bashi, the first president of Turkmenistan, Saparmurat Niyazov. The first time he became president during uncontested elections, gaining 98% of the vote. The second election in 1992 was much more democratic, he had rivals. But Turkmen Bashi still won, 99.5% of the voters voted for him. And a year later he received the status of head of all the Turkmen of the world at the initiative of the Democratic Party of Turkmenistan. Someone explained to these guys that democracy works a little differently. Or maybe it was just a protection from the United States, you know? If you already have the democracy, then they can't invade you. In general, nothing interesting happened during the years of Turkmen Bashir rule. The usual set of a dictator, a cult of personality, five heroes of Turkmenistan titles for the leader, hundreds of streets named after him, a couple of fake revolution attempts used to purge the government from the people who fell from his favor, but nothing special. Almost all Turkmen Bashir's ministers were eventually arrested, except for one modest guy who in 17 years rose from a rural dentist into a minister of health of Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. So how did he manage that? According to the official version, all this was due to the sheer brilliance, diligence and genius of Bedi Muhammadov. Unofficially, everything is much simpler, most likely he is just the illegitimate son of the Turkmen Bashi. Of course, Ashhabad refutes all these dirty rumors, and the real father of the president is also a national hero now. But just look at them. And also, it is highly unlikely that the Asian dictator would leave his country to someone other than a blood relative. We can talk for a long time about the successful presidency of Birdi Muhammadov. We can talk about how the standard of living in Turkmenistan is falling, but the number of wars and golden monuments of the leader is growing. The largest monument, 20 meters high, stands proudly in the center of Ashgabat. We can talk about rampant corruption, unemployment, which reached 60% according to the official data. We can talk about the lack of freedom of speech, about hundreds of political prisoners and about other things. If you think seriously for a moment, then Birdi Muhammadov is a terrible person, a Turkmen nationalist with megalomania, ruling 6 million people with an iron fist and single-handedly controlling the entire economy of his country. By the way. Do you think that you could just leave the country? No. If you're under 40, you cannot leave the country. It's simple. Wait, that's illegal. Of course, Bidim Muhammadov doesn't eat people and he doesn't threaten the whole world with nuclear bombs, but he is definitely among the top 10 of the most cruel dictators of the world. Naturally, our hero is not content with only a place in the top 10. Therefore, there is one rating where he is definitely the best, and it is a rating of the most eccentric dictators of the world. He has no competitors here. 
By the way, his predecessor was kinda off his rocket too. Turkmen Bashi came up with his own calendar. The month of January was named after Turkmen Bashi himself and September after the name of the book he wrote, Ruhnama. He abolished the Academy of Sciences, banned operas, circuses and ballads, closed all research institutes, refused to acknowledge all diplomas of all foreign universities and forbade people from walking the streets with golden tea, which are a symbol of wealth and achievement in the East. And the most scandalous innovation of the first president was the abolition of pensions for all elderly people who had children. The head of the state considered that in Soviet times pensions were accrued too generously and the state did not need to overpay. Those who did not have children were asked to give their houses to the state and to move to nursing homes or to prove their 38 years of uninterrupted work experience. Fortunately, the current president of Turkmenistan did not think about such radical reforms. The strangest of his whims is that he ordered for all officials over 40 to go grey-haired. And those who cannot do this were forcibly died or fired. The guy has complexes about his age, but this is harmless compared to the laws of Turkmen Bashi. Moreover, he reversed most of his father's idiotic decisions. And he does not have the time to come up with some stupid laws. Judge for yourself, he is. A racer, a singer, a bowler, an athlete, a rambo, a rider, an artist, a golfer and a defender of the Turkmen nation. And this is only a small part of the leader's hobbies. However, in his free time he honors the traditions and takes care of the prosperity of Turkmenistan. For this he has been awarded with many medals and orders. Here's a list of them. The orders for great love for independent Turkmenistan and love for the homeland are especially interesting. And these are two different awards. By the way, some other nations also rewarded him, and for some reason even UNESCO did. The maestro also has more than two dozen honorary titles. Well, what does Birdi Muhammadov enjoy more than getting orders and titles? He loves writing books. He is an author of more than 30 books and each of them immediately became compulsory for study in Turkmenistan. Here you can see the presentation of one of the books in the country's government. And no, it's not some kind of a holy scripture, it's just a book about tea. Special herbal tea of Birdi Muhammadov. And yes, the book must be kissed. Birdi Muhammadov is also a sublime warrior capable of defeating any army alone. For example, here's the president of Ukraine visiting his troops. And here's the president of Russia doing this. And this is the president of United States. Losers, that's not how you train an army. On a bicycle, on the move, and he hits the bullseye every time. I already imagined this terrifying army of weaponized cyclists. Needless to say, Argadak is the main weightlifter of Turkmenistan. In this video, he raises a metal bar above his head to the thunderous applause of his government. The bar, of course, is golden. Why is he doing this? Apparently, this is how he dominates and shows his power. Sorry, what? What do I hear? Do you say dumb joke and the militarist? No, 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 no. Gurbunguli has a delicate soul and in his free time he writes music. Here he shows the cadets how to sing with a guitar. A song of his own composition, by the way. Here he is rapping with his grandson. And here he sings a song about Karakum to the delight of all women and men too of Turkmenistan. <laughs> And he was also a DJ at the latest government's New Year party. If your party doesn't look like this, don't even bother to invite me. By the way, did you like the soundtrack of this video? Me neither. But guess who's the author? What force has our hero not yet conquered? Maybe the speed? He's the king of speed. In 2018, he personally assembled a high-speed SUV and drove it around the gates of hell. And you know, I'm kinda convinced it looked freaking cool. The gorgeous leader loves to organize various competitions with huge prizes. In the same 2018, he won the rally race against the professional athlete Gurbun Murat Khamadov without any preparation. He just by chance suddenly arrived to the start of the race, 
The judges allowed him to enter it and he easily won the race. Moreover, he even improved his time, which he showed in 2015 in competition with the same sportsman. Such a profession, losing to the president. But the main passion of Berdemuhamedov is of course horses. In particular, the aforementioned rap with his grandson was dedicated to his beloved horse. There are such lyrics as You portend good luck to us You are the anticipation Ravach Where there is a statement of the problem You are a solution Ravach Still a better love story than Twilight Once the president had arranged a large-scale racing event with a price of 18 million dollars where under the sights of hundreds of TV cameras he fell off his horse. Of course, he still won the race and humbly received his deserved prize, but I'm afraid that we certainly won't see that horse anymore. <sighs> Rest in peace, Ginger. You are a fine horse. By the way, the president of Turkmenistan wanted to remove this footage from the internet, but we all know how it works. Recently, Gurbanguly became famous for his attitude towards coronavirus. In March, he first advised residents to inhale the smoke of gabola at home for the prevention of coronavirus disease. And then he simply banned the word. Oddly enough, it worked. There is still not a single case of the COVID-19 in the country. I told you, genius. So, let's be honest, none of us would like to live in Turkmenistan, but it is extremely funny to watch it from the side. And Larry Charles gets a big fat 1 out of 10 for his dictator from me. Like bruh, just wait a couple of years and the script will just write itself. It would probably be even better too.